This is the story of three science crusaders, each in their own way determined to clean up bad science. It is corruption of the, of the scientific process, um, and it happens both through uh, commercial interest, as I've said, drug companies, device companies, um, academic institutions unwilling to confront fraud in medical research, and individual academics who have their own uh, agendas, they are their own careers, their own he uh, closely held passionate beliefs which do affect, and there's endless evidence to show this, do affect the outcome of that research. It's not my job to be popular, no, <laughs> I'm very clear about that. to do is set the record straight mm. and you gave us that free uh, access to your editorial pages where we wrote that that editorial yeah. that turned the whole thing around and turned the whole right? part of the world around I'm joined now by Dr. Fiona Godley, the editor-in-chief of the British Medical Journal. She's been calling for greater transparency from the drugs companies. Not only 15 trials of Tamiflu, but 123 trials of Tamiflu, of which 74 are entirely Roche-funded, Roche-controlled, Roche has the data. That you begin to see the madness of the situation, that we are getting a very, very partial, incomplete, misleading picture of the effectiveness of many drugs. The absurd situation that it's taken four or five years of uh, really obsessive, scientific, relentless work by the Cochrane Collaboration, investigative journalists at the BMJ. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a kind of hide and seek, an Alice in Wonderland world where this data should be available and it's taken all this work to get it out. These uh, revelations are not just my revelations, they've been checked exhaustively by editors of the British Medical Journal who've peer reviewed it, who've gone back into the data individually and checked back and forth to be sure that what I've said is accurate. And this is a shock that's going to be heard around the world in the medical community. Here we go again. First it was breasts, now implants routinely used by the NHS for hip replacement, maybe leaking metal fragments into their hosts. The UK regulator, the MHRA, today announced that 49,000 patients with all metal total hip replacements, like this one with a large diameter, will have to have annual checks because of safety fears. But just to, to stay on this central question of misrepresenting the position of junior doctors, I can quote to you two things you've said. There are 11,000 excess deaths because we do not staff our hospitals properly at weekends. And you've said that excessive overtime rates give hospitals a disincentive to roster as many doctors as they need at weekends. And that leads to 11,000 excessive deaths. So you, when the editor of the BMJ accuses you of misrepresenting that report, she was right.